Total Carp Way with PVA. We're here at Linear Fisheries Hunts Corner Lake with Tom Maker and Ian Chilcott. We're going to discuss everything there is to know about PVA and how to use it. Tom's got us off to an absolute flying start with the catch of this, was it 26.15? Yeah, 26.15 mate, yeah. Superb fish, caught using PVA. The guys are going to show us everything there is to know about the PVA, how you use it to catch carp just like this one. Last night, <laughs> it's quite amazing, really. It's I love Hunts Corner Lake, you know, and I've come out here on and off uh, over the years, for, yeah, for quite a few years. And uh, it's the originals that you've come here to catch. They're, they're the they're the jewels in the crane. And there's one particular one in here I've seen over the years in various publications. Uh, my mate Dave Lane caught it many moons ago, and I always wanted to catch it. And uh, yeah, it, it happened yesterday afternoon. You got one there, mate? Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a really nice fish, too. Look at that water. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Have you seen isn't it? him yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just seen it. I've seen some scales, too, Mr. Colson. Nice. When you think about the conversation we had about half an hour ago, my knees are starting to knock now. Look at that. Yeah, oh, my no, lord in heaven. Yeah, he's a good fish, mate. Oh, Dordy, this is all a bit serious. So, um, go for it. What did you have him on then? On my normal PVA bag, mate. The mesh. Uh, just had a lead about, just again in the the silt behind the gravel. Um, just Are you a bag okay there. doing that yourself, mate? Yeah, I'm fine, mate. I'm fine. Half a dozen bags around it, uh, and away we go. Brilliant. It's uh, you know people think that PVA because everybody uses it is going to blow, don't they? You know, they're always talking about tactics that blow, and I think of all the things that never will, PVA Mate, is I it. think there's so much talked about stuff blowing and, you know, <laughs> pineapple pop-ups. When are they going to blow? <laughs> you know, if it was going to happen, it was going to happen a long time ago, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. He looks a cracker, mate. Look at him in that That water. is a belter. That is incredible. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Let's get me net down. Boilies? Yes, yeah, as per normal, 10 and 14 millers. Oh man, Ooh. this is the fish I've always wanted out of here. Come on, baby, no, 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 no. Ooh. Don't do Not this quite to ready, me. Is he? he looks stunning in that water, that sun going through there, mate. Unbelievable, isn't it? This is I what often, it's all about, Chile. I often say, you know, how can you enjoy this bit when you know what's hanging on the end? Mm. And he's in Excellent. the net. Excellent. Well done, mate. Good work. Good mate, work. I cannot believe that half an hour ago you said, right, now we want a nice scaly one. And that that's one fantastic. of the originals. Brilliant. Great it stuff, It actually mate. Well done. doesn't get any better. <laughs> I've been coming to Hunt's Corner for quite a few years now, on and off, and uh, this is the one I wanted to catch. And uh, here it is, and uh, I think you can see why. What an incredible looking animal. Hmm. PVA, I love it. It really was something to behold, and the, the, the sun was just catching it beautifully. And then, and then Tom got some fabulous still shots for us as well, didn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah, he's handy with a camera, that boy, isn't he? And uh, yeah, he did. It's, um, I think it's, it's helpful to have someone of Tom's experience on the other side of the camera because he knows what he's looking to, to mm. achieve with it. But he did get some absolutely brilliant shots. Yeah, Definitely one that'll live long in the memory. Yeah, without a doubt, and. You know, in the scheme of things, £29 isn't particularly a huge fish, but it's what that fish represents. Um, you know, it's been around a long time. It's survived all the floods they've had here, disease, um, and everything us anglers have thrown at it, and it still looks absolutely stunning and in tip-top, Nick. And that's, yeah, that's how you want, really, isn't it? So what constitutes a good PVA bag then? Okay, in chilly world. <clears throat> that would be a, a good bag. It's tight, it's compact, um, and you know, it, it's aerodynamic if you like. That probably isn't. It's wobbly and it's baggy, loose, uh, and, and you know, it's not gonna fly through the air. I do a lot of baiting up 
with PVA bags. Um, it, it's something that offers the carp a very, very different baiting situation than, than boilers put out with a catapult or a throwing stick or even out of a spod, they're going to spread the rain. Um, so yeah, that is that is a good bag. It's compact. I can fire that 70, 80 yards out of a, out of a good catapult. Uh, and, and it creates, as I say, an unusual baiting situation. So feeding the bags, if mm. you've cast out with one of these attached, mm. how many would the, of those would you then actually feed out with a catapult? Very dependent on the area that I'm fishing. And, and very often, I mean, people sort of associate me with putting loads of bait in and, and really I want to get a bite off a spot first of all, and then I'll, I'll up the, the, the rate that I'm putting the bait in and the amount that I'm putting in. But six of those on it around it, and I'm not trying to be hugely accurate because I want those fish moving between each mouthful. Um, makes them a lot more catchable. So six bags for every rod, yep. fishing three rods, that's 18 bags at a time. It's a lot of PVA, isn't it? It is a lot of PVA, but there are cost-effective ways of doing it. And uh, most uh, PVA comes in seven metre lengths. Right. Um, on the actual are, tube itself? On the actual tube itself. And uh, these come in ten metre lengths. Oh, uh, OK. So you've got an extra three metres, which makes it hugely cost-effective. Um, it is a very, very effective way of fishing. As 90% of my fishing is done this way, very dependent on distance because the bag is going to you know, affect the distance that you can cast sure. out. You know, the mental long range stuff, you, you're putting a single up bait out there because you simply can't cast a bag that far. Uh, and that's another thing for, for people to, to realise you're adding weight, you're casting weight to uh, the setup and you need to be able to you know, ensure that your tackle is up to the job of casting it. The last thing you want to do is uh, be cracking off and leaving rigs out in the lake. So uh, yeah, it, it's, um, it, it needs to be cost effective and there's your answer. Okay, brilliant. So the, the, the better bag is the nice tight compact one then, you've got a few there. But mm. um, just show me how you actually tie it up. Okay, let's do it. Put those back in there. PVA tube, it's the heavy mesh that I normally use, the wide one. So we'll take it out. Ensure there's a knot in the bottom or all the bait's going to fall through. Nice little funnel around the top so you're not spilling bait all over the place. The first thing to do, we'll get a few of the 10 millers, run them down the tube. Three or four of the 14s. What could happen if you leave it up and tie it like that? It can become a lumpy, bumpy bag that's not very aerodynamic with just boilies in. And the ideal, the, the, the thing with pellets is they're ideal for filling in the spaces in the bag yeah. to make it round and compact. So, a few pellets. The next thing to do, don't just lay it down and tie it off. Before you let the piece, mix the pellets in, get it all round so they're filling in the gaps, as I say. Let it out, and all we want to do now is to compact that down. The pellets are hard, so it's gonna, you're going to just have to pull the PV up around the bag until you've got it really, really tight. So that's already nice and compact there, isn't it? Yeah, you can just keep doing it and just keep pulling the PVA through. Ooh, it's going to slip out every now and again. The more pressure you put on it. But that's it. And all we need now is to tie a knot to secure it. So we'll get on with that. Little over hand knot. Run it through. Keep the pressure on the bag through the middle of the knot like that. You can take your thumb away, that's it's still as tight as you like and pull the mesh through and that's the bag. Before you cut it off, make sure you tie one more knot so you're ready to do the next one. All that's left to do is trim it off. All ready to rock and roll. Right, no time to waste. I need to get this back in the pond, mate. Just before you do that, can you just have a quick look at your rig and how you're attaching the bag? Right. Five inches of strippable Cortex braid, 15 pound. An anti-tangle sleeve with a loop at one end. A size 7 SSC armour point hook at the other with a little piece of shrink tubing just to crank the eye of the hook over at a more aggressive angle. And a long hair. 
the hook bait, does that match the boilers that are in your PVA bags? Yeah, as it should. It's actually uh, a hooker that's uh, designed purposely for hook baits in a dumbbell shape. And uh, on top of that, I have a small piece of corn. I'm not really bothered what colour it is. Uh, I've used hundreds of different colours with exactly the same results. It's there to negate the weight of the hook, and, and that's basically the rig itself. Right. I noticed that there's quite a large <coughs> loop of the hair sticking out at the top. I've left that there on purpose because that helps me then to set up the rig on the bag itself. Right, OK. Let's have a look at that then. OK. First thing to do, I tend to put the hook through up near to the knot, right in, not in it, but near to it, because that's where I can pick up more mesh, which makes the, the, it strong enough for me to cast it. So why would you not go through the knot itself? Because it can leave lots and lots of residue. Uh, it, you know, it could happen on the hook, and that might affect the hooking potential of the rig. Right. So w with it like that, that's nice and clear once the bag's melted. Now, I like to use really long hairs. It's the kind of presentation I want to use, but when you're casting out with, uh, with long hairs, there's every chance it can tangle one around the main line or it can whip around the shank of the hook, ruining the presentation you're trying to create. So a little trick that I use and why I've pushed that hook bait all the way up to the, uh, to the hook itself, with a splicing needle, open it up. I'm going to pick up a couple of strands of the mesh, get the needle through the loop of the hair, shut the gate or it will get trapped on the way back through, pull it all the way through, trap it with your thumb, get the needle out of the way. All we've got to do, dry it off if it has been in your mouth or it might melt your PVA. Put it through the loop and then pull the hair stop up to the mesh. All that you need to do then is push the hook bait down into position. And no matter what I do now, that is never ever going to tangle and it's going to sit on the bottom. When that melts, your presentation is absolutely perfect. Brilliant. So the PVA bag adds weight to the whole setup. Does that make a difference to the actual tackle that you use then? Yeah, it makes a massive difference. Um, you have to use tackle to suit it to the job. You know, casting out a heavy PVA bag and a lead when you're going for distance, it's not only dangerous to the fish because you're leaving a light, could leave a live rig out in the lake, it's dangerous to people on the other bank. <clears throat> We're here on a very, very narrow day ticket lake today, so I don't have to cast any great distance, which means <coughs> I can use my favourite setup, a 12 foot, two and three quarter pound test curve rod, coupled with a 10,000 sized free spool reel, uh, it's, it forms a balanced setup. And when a setup is balanced, you can get the best out of it. If you put a big pit reel on here, it's going to be a cumbersome, uh, you know, an unbalanced setup, and you just don't, simply aren't going to get the best out of it. So that setup is, is, is absolutely ideal for this. I'm not going to be casting any more than about. 60 yards tops right. uh, and this is more than capable of, of, of doing everything I want it to do. There's 12 pound fluorocarbon main line on there, a three foot of lead core, a lead clip and a three ounce lead and I can get a reasonably big bag on there and whack it those 50, 60 yards that I need to without any danger of leaving tackle in the lake or endangering people on the far bank. But <clears throat> if you want to go for distance, you have to use tackle that is capable of putting it that, 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 that distance. Uh, Tom's a little bit further up the lake. I know you're going to go and see him later on. Uh, he's got three and a half pound test curve rods with 15 pound line straight through and is ideal for his solid bag presentations and at the range he's fishing. So just coming back to your tackle then, I can't help noticing, and, and let's get it right, you're one of the biggest names in carp fishing, high profile, extremely talented angler. It's up, man. But you're not necessarily using ridiculously expensive gear here, are you? No, and uh, some people take the mickey out of me because of that, but this is a Warrior S rod, probably the most popular carp fishing rod in the world, and it does everything I want it to do. Coupled with a Stratos 10,000 E reel, it, it, it's balanced and, and it, it's a rod. I, I think playing fish is, is a massive part of the excitement 
uh, and I want a fishing rod wherever I can uh, within reason that bends. And you know, playing fish on this outfit is absolutely top draw fun. And uh, yeah, it, it just works. Every, it does everything I want to do, you know, uh, apart from distance, you know, real long range stuff. It's perfect. So, what sort of price are we looking at for that setup then? <laughs> That's the other thing, isn't it? That little lot there, it costs you 150 quid. For the tops. rod and the reel? Rod and wow. reel. Um, wow. Which is very good because you may save lots of money and you can go and spend it on more PVA products. <laughs> so, just getting back to Tom then, he's not using this setup as you've just mentioned. No. Um, I couldn't help but think, he's not casting any further than you, is he? Because obviously this lake, as you said, is quite long and narrow. Mm. But is he using heavier gear at, at, at the end, so heavier leads and big bags? Is that why he needs to step up? Right. I don't use PVA, solid PVA bags. Um, it, it's, I, I'm a bit of a boring old git. And I, uh, I just I use this because it's hugely effective. Tom knows all about it, and I reckon you ought to get out there and ask him what the tricks of the trade are. I think I'll do that. Go up and see what Tom's doing then. Blimey, Tom. <laughs> Tilly said you were a bit good, but wow. I know, it's a bit out of the blue, this one, look. middle of the day. Yeah, just solid bag. Yes, mate. Yeah, solid bag Brilliant. over the baited area. I uh, I hadn't had nothing for about two or three hours, so I just wound them in, changed the colour of the pop up. Still like ten mil. This one's on a pink, I think. Well, one's on a pink, one's on a green. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this one is the, is the pink one. So you're using the same stuff in the bag, then, but you've just changed the colour of the hook bait. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. I can tell you're at Oxford, mate. The old yeah. Plane's coming the old planes, yeah. Brian's not every ten, fifteen minutes sometimes. I yeah. It's, uh, when you're down on the other lakes, you're a bit closer, and they don't half make the ground shake. Right. Feel like a good fish? Yeah, I think the ones during the daytime that just go off out the blue tend to be the bigger fish because right. during the night you can get the little ones going, or like the mid doubles, and uh, that they seem to get on the bait. But during the day, I think the, the fish move away, and then you get the odd bigger one comes through, and you just want something to leave. The little ones are moving around in groups, then, yeah. and then once they get on I think that they're, baited area, that's they're quite it. shoal fish. Because um, with the 26 that you had yesterday, he, he was a bite completely out of the blue, wasn't Yeah, he? just a totally random bite. I mean, this is only the, I think I've had three or four bites during the day. Right. I mean, they've all been good fish, a 27, a 26, a scraper 20, and then now this one. Um, I do think that the, the bigger ones tend to come out during the day, whereas most people would use a zig now, which probably I, I should be using a zig on one rod. But uh, I always like to keep one on the bait there, because you do, Amount of times you've, you know, you've, you've put one out in the area, you mm. wind it in in the morning because you've not caught, and it gets to the end of the day, you've not caught on zigs, and you think, oh, it could have gone if I'd have left it. And at the end of the day, mate, we're here doing a DVD about PVA. Yeah. You know, we want to catch fish using yeah. PVA, and the only way we can prove that it works is, is this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could put three zigs out, but it's not going to show that PVA solid bags will work because we can't we're show that at night. We're not to tell lies, mate, are we? No. At the end of the day. No, that's it. How do you want to handle it with the net? Do you want to take care of that yourself? Uh, yeah, well, you to get rid of any rods for you. You can jump in there and net it if you want. I don't think I'll be jumping in, Tom. If you tell you me sure? where, the way you want me, I'm quite happy to land it for I you. I suppose it looks like the ocean, but it's certainly not as warm <laughs> as the uh, as an ocean, is it? This. Do you want me to get one of these rods out of the uh, way so you can bring it through the middle? Or? It looks about ready now. Yeah, there's the old pink there's pop the up. There's the pink pop up. Yep. Oh, I did think it was on a pink. There it comes. Here she goes. There you go. Excellent, yes. great stuff. Well done, Tom. Thank you, mate. Good man. caught that line, yeah. Just sort that out. Excellent, mate. Well done, Tom. Cheers. Good angry. Cheers. Solid PVA bags do the business. That was, mate, yeah. Solid. Do you want to pop him back and then we'll sit down and have a look at how you do it? Yes, mate, yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah, was, many yeah. on the session so far. Yeah. Caught in the solid bags, which you're going to show us how to tie yes, them up. Yes, mate. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go for it. Get the bag. A bit longer than normal, but Saint Fox are working on. They won't even tell me, so it's held out for that one. Yeah. So I'll start by cutting it down. That's obviously down to a size that you prefer then for this yeah, method. Yeah. Just like I was saying when we was playing it about the, the size of bag. At, at the minute, I've been catching on smaller bags over the bait. So I'm, I'm going to stick with small for, for a while, mm. just to see how it goes. But yeah, 
So I've got the bag, there's two fingers in it just to like, separate it. Not, you don't want much pellet, just to, enough to put, I don't know, I mean, just to fill the bottom of it up. Do you normally go with such a small pellet in a bag? Yeah, because it's easier to mould around. Yeah. Whereas if you've got a big one, you, you're trying to tighten something around and you've got loose bits of PVA right. and it traps air and it holds it up. Got you. So, it's a quick, bit tricky this one with the wind, but with the rig, you sort of want to swing it in. A lot of people put the rig at the, at the top, like the back end of it, but I'll go down next to the lead, which looks a bit alien, but when it's out there, the pop-up comes and sits proud of the pellet anyway, so right. you're pretty much all right. So that goes in there. Lay that down. Coil the rig up. Looks a bit, I mean, you'd never cast the rig out. You'd never want it to tangle, but this is pretty much all over itself. It can't tangle inside. No, though, it, it can't. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's like place. that now. It's yeah. going to go out there like that. Yeah. Just so. notice that you've adapted your lead slightly. Yeah, because it. when you're twisting the bags, the lead core can coil up. And if you pull it tight after you've, like, you've tied it off, it can unravel it. So right. I just put a solid boom there, just something nice and stiff just to mould around and that just holds it all in place. And that's just pushed into the inline layer. Yeah, that's just, yeah, just pushed in, inside, you get um, the rubber inserts, just pushed inside that. So, right. And then that, that holds up and that's solid there. And it's easy for drying, you can just blow the water out as well. Sure. So it's easy, so yeah, so the, once the lead's in there, lead's centre at the bottom, so the weight's forward. And just carry on filling it. How far up the bag would you expect to put the pellets into then? Leave about an inch at the top, I normally do, just so you've got something to work with. Mm. There's nothing worse than trying to tie off a bag that's got no, no PVA at sure. the top. That's in there, just tap it all the way around. So you're trying to get that nice and compact and get yeah, all the bait down? Yeah, trying to get all the, the bait down. I mean, they're, they're mega durable bags. I mean, you can really play with them, work them. Right. So don't be frightened to, uh, to work them. Then this is where the stiff boom comes in, because you can hold that out of the way. Got your fingers to trap it there. Work it around your fingers. One twist on it. Add some PVA tape, which is here. So you've now twisted the PVA That's around that just solid one twist. Boom. There's nothing yeah. holding that. Just me twisting it. You don't lick it or anything. No, not yet. One, two, three. I'll go around four. It's probably a bit much, but water's quite warm, so it'll melt quite quick anyway. Mm. In between my legs, just do. Literally, you just want two knots. It'll hold with two knots because once you've trimmed it down, you can just lick it and it'll hold tight. Sure. Well, if you were casting like a real long distance with this, would you want to secure it anymore? Or would it would, it not that would hold. It right. would hold. You'd be surprised what it would hold. Trim that off. And that's, that's the bag, as it would be. You've obviously tied a lot of these because that's already looking a lot yeah. neater than I any mean, that I tied. You, you can feel how tight that is. That's, that's, that is solid yeah, already. That's really compact. And that's without doing the, doing the corners. Right. So, just then, secondly, I'll just trim the stuff off the top because you don't want that waving about. A bit fiddly. Is that important just to trim all those little excess bits? Yeah, because at yeah. the end of the day when that's out over your spot, that's going to take the longest amount anyway because it's the biggest right. part. So you don't want more out there sure. that you don't need. And I just literally just hold that down on the boom and that just neatens off the top area of the bag. Nice. That's that. Mm. And then with the corners, it's just to make it more aerodynamic, because I'm only fishing 30 odd yards, you don't really need to, but just for this, work that in with your finger. So you're pushing the hook bait into Push the pellet right in, yeah. There, yeah. I mean, that hook bait there is probably about, pff, it's no, I'm touching the lead, but that, that, right. that, I'm not really too bothered about mm. that, because once that dissolves, the pop-up will come and sit proud of the pellet anyway. So just licking my finger. Sticking that down. Doing the same with the opposite side. It's interesting what you said about how durable the bags are because yeah, you know, you're using a bit of moisture yeah. on that corner. It's, it's not affecting the bag, no, is it? So. No. Once that's um, damp and it sticks down on top of PVA, that will, that will really hold. Excellent. And you'll probably get that down 15, 18 foot of water. Right. Before it starts to break down. Yeah, yeah before it starts to go. And that's it. Excellent. That is one very yeah, solid it is pretty. PVA bag. It doesn't take that long to do either. Well, you're obviously a bit of a master, Tom. Yeah, I've done them a few, a few times of those before, yeah, time, so yeah, it probably does yeah. help. But Excellent. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, so I was with Chile just now, 
yep. uh, using the small mesh bags, and he took me through his tackle, which was yes. two and three quarter pound rods, smallish kind of ten thousand size reels. Can't help noticing that obviously you're a little bit kind of more beefed yeah, up. Yeah, this is a uh, much more bigger setup. Yeah, we've got a twelve foot six, three and a half pound test curve rod, right, and a, a much bigger reel as well. It's perfect balance for this type of fishing, and it's fifteen pound camo soft steel mainline as well, because although that's a three ounce lead in there, that's got an ounce of pellet. So four ounces, you don't want to be chucking mm. that round on a two and three quarter. Sure. You do need a bit of a bigger rod. And I, and I, I said before, I'm only fishing 30 odd yards, but the far side is about 80 yards. So if I do need to get over there, that allows me to get over there. Yeah, we've seen one or two show over towards yeah. the reed line, haven't we? Yeah, so. I think with such a, a, a big area over there, three, they, they do creep along that back margin. Mm. So yeah, I've got the option if I want to put one over there. Excellent. So yeah, no, it's perfect. It's perfect for that. So mate, solid bag, has gone back out onto the spot. Yeah, that's back out there. And did nicely. Um, so having looked at the solid PVA, are there any other uses that, that you would use? Do you ever use the mesh, for example? Yeah, yeah, for, for sticks. I would say yesterday when I had that fish, I had the one rod over an area of boilers, but when you're using a bigger bait, say 14 mil, it's a bit too big really to stick inside that solid. So I'll go for the stick. Right. And, uh, yeah, so go for a stick. Do you want to take us through on your tie one? Yeah. What, um, what size PVA is that? that this you're is using? super narrow. So that's mega, that's mega, all right, okay. Low, low diameter. So when you put it on there, you can cast it a long way, and it's not really going to affect your cast sure. as much as what a bigger bag would. So, yeah. come to the plunger. Get that out. That is really narrow, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's tiny. It's all neat, so just fill that up with. What's in your mix there, so then, mate? That's just uh, crushed cell, a little bit of ground up pellet. A little bit of uh, cell activator just to bind it all together. The liquid? Yeah, just, just the liquid. And that's just literally being. So you're pushing down that away. down nice and tight against, really, really against your knee for, for compression, yeah? And then just popping that out. As you can see, the oil's there going into the PVA. It's quite a small stick as well, is it? Yeah. A bit narrow then, it's quite short, isn't it? That? Yeah, it's only, only small. You just need something to mask the hook. I mean, if you cast right. in and there's a bit of weed on the bottom or anything like that. Mm. So. Similar thing, just one twist through. Tied off nice and tight. As my dad would say, I look cack handed. Well, I am left handed, <laughs> so it probably looks different. So yeah, that's that two knots, snip it between, and that's your stick. And then that just attaches? Yeah, I've got the credit down your exactly right. the same setup as before, still with an inline, but I've not got the boom because I don't need it because I'm not right. twisting nothing around it. So I've got that there. Got that's on a, uh, on a quick clip. Pass the needle through the bag. Different hook length this time, coated. Yeah, coated. Cortex, is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah this is Cortex, this is 20 pound. Um, you don't really want to braid because it, it could catch around there and flap. Sure. This has got an element of uh, stiffness in it. Right. So that just threads down over there. Through the, through the bag. Just pulling the rig into it so the hook can't catch nothing. So that's completely protected it's then completely wherever protected. it lands on. I can't, yeah. nothing. The, the, the can't catch on anything, it's impossible. Super. I know it's got a snowman up, mate. Yeah, that's that's again because you couldn't get that in a solid. It'd just be far too big. I've got a little silicon sleeve, which pulls down over the rig onto the quick clip, like so, and then just to neaten everything up, that comes up and just covers it, and that's it. Brilliant. That is extremely neat. One thing that's really stood out for you, Tom, as far as I'm concerned, is that everything that you've done here, yeah. the solid bags and that, immaculate, absolutely yeah, immaculate. Isn't it? Yeah, nice, nice, neat presentation. That'll go out there and that'll land, and that, because of the how light that mix is, that'll slowly drift down, that'll sit up, you have a nice pile of bait over your hook, nothing can get to the hook, no flicker cart comes along, and has it with nothing to mask the hook. Brilliant, good man. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Those solid PVA bags, mate. He's just had a cracker up there. Yeah, he's pretty good at all that, isn't he? What are you up to? Uh, I'm making up some stringers. Uh, you know, after yesterday's bit of sport, um, you know, I, it, it's the the forgotten art almost. Um, you've got your PVA bags, which I use for a lot of my fishing, but uh, as we saw, they've got the old uh, pellets in, which are a magnet for. Um, tension bream and sometimes you just want to use boilies and uh, again discussing the bags a uh, boilies in a PVA bag can be 
pretty ungainly, they're not very aerodynamic, they don't fire out very well. And the ideal way to compensate for that is to use a stringer. And uh, yeah, I've, I've got several varieties that I do use too. You don't see it so much these days, do you? The old string is pretty much the PVA tape <coughs> string all people use it for. It's tying off solid bags like Tom was. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's the only thing you ever get it, uh, it gets used for, I think. And, and I use stringers quite a lot in me fishing. It, you know, certainly when you're casting at, uh, at showing fish, it's just a nice little pile of attraction, you know, just there on the spot. And uh, there's several ways of doing it as well. Um, <coughs> And it's like all forms of fishing, to be honest with you, Mark. It, it's not, the, the only limitation is, is your, you know, the limits of your imagination, really. And that is a basic stringer, a five bait stringer. There's a little loop uh, that's tucked down under three of those baits, enough to hold it in position, even on a big cast. You nip it on and you fire it out. But why stop there? You know, five boilies. <coughs> Again, I've just halved a few of them and put, put it on. It just makes the baited area around the up bait a little bit more interesting. Uh, going further on, if you don't want them all lying there in a straight line, tie a little circle of them, chopped, and whole ones. You just nip that on the hook and throw it out. How would you tie that then? How, how'd you get it into a circle? Just exactly the same as your other stringer. Pull a bit of that out. All you do is just tie it round. OK. Uh, and again, it's just, you're trying to present carp with something that they don't see very often and, and, that, and, and stringers, as you say, is, is a much underused thing these days and that's an ideal way to do it. There's one problem though with using stringers, <clears throat> especially with the way that I fish with the long hair, there's still that element uh, of a tangle to consider. Um, and that's on with a long hair, yeah? Right. If you could hold that on for just for a second. <clears throat> One other brilliant bit of kit in the, in, in the PVA department are the foam nuggets. And these little high risers, all you need to do, take one of them out. What I do is flatten it a little bit, moisten the inside of it so it sticks together. Give me the rig back. <coughs> Where you folded it over, yep, excuse me, push that into the PVA. And around the back, compress it together because there's every chance when that hits the surface it can come flying off and as the rig's descending it could still tangle around it so you need to you know, really secure it on there and that ain't never tangling in a million Brilliant. years. The other thing with it, if you want to put any free offerings around it, it has to be reasonably calm conditions as much as they are now, that little bit of white rises to the surface and you've got a lovely little sight bob to put a little bit of carp bait around it. Uh, it's ideal but there is one other thing you can do on the PVA front, and I call it my little piles stringer. If, you have, if you've forgotten your foam, uh, it's a good way of stopping tangles, but it's also the method that I use for the vast majority of time. It's three little boilies tied in a circle uh, under tension, and all you do is thread the hook link through and thread it down to the hook, yeah? And all you're going to do, don't put it through the knotted section, you're just going to put the hook through one of the exposed areas of the PVA. <coughs> I'll just get him set up properly. And there it is. The hair is trapped inside so it's never going to tangle and it flies like a bullet. It's an absolutely perfect PVA trap and uh, as we said, it's not often used and when you're doing something a little bit some different sometimes, that's when you start getting the bites. And that mark is the very setup that I used to catch that lovely fish yesterday. Uh, watching the water as I was, saw a fish rise, quickly put it together, got it out on the spot and 20 minutes later it was away. Absolutely fantastic. Wow, 29 <laughs> pound mate. How good's that? Oh man, well it's just the forgotten art isn't it? Um, a stringer. So I'm, I'll fish over boilies. I'm predominantly a boilie angler. And, um, you know, I'm always looking for different ways. I'll change my presentation during a session. I'm not always sure. going to fish bags. Yeah. Uh, I'll fish a stringer. Bags, maybe a bag with no pellets in. 
uh, a bag with just 14s, a bag with some chop boilers in. You know, just because it's a round boiler doesn't mean it ain't a versatile bait, because mm. it is, you know. Well, that's the key, mate. You've got, you got to stay versatile, haven't you? Yeah, without a doubt. And uh, yeah, that's the results. And uh, that's all the fires firmly lit, mate, without oh, yeah. a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, you know it, mate. <laughs> there you go then, second 29 pounder of the session, all caught on PVA. Hello, mate. You all right? Yeah, you see yourself there. You all right? So, the weather's closing in. We've had a fantastic 48 hour session here at Hunt's Corner. The boys have taught us no end about the use of PVA. I've learned half a dozen real nuggets, you know, real gems about PVA and how to use it to catch nice big carp on a day ticket lake. If I've learned those things in this time, then I'm hoping that you, through enjoying this DVD, will do exactly the same. So all that leads me to do is to say a very big thank you to the boys. Tom, you've mate. impressed me no end, Cheers. mate. Excellent. Chilly, pleasure as always. It's been emotional. <laughs> Some cracking fish, mate, and I just hope we can do it again. Oh, we will. Ah, I know I sound boring, but light my fire. <laughs>